There's a YouTube channel uh, titled Old Alabama Gardener. It's run by a fellow named uh, Charles Hancock. Charles is a very smart guy. He's, uh, he's 80, um, but he, his career was involving uh, rocket science and engineering. So he developed some fairly sophisticated uh, technology. Now, you'll see, and I'll apologize beforehand, uh, he and I did some interviews. He's got some real challenges. He lives way out in the woods in uh, Alabama, doesn't have a, a good bandwidth. So a lot of his video during the interviews is just pixelated. So you may want to plug it in your ears and listen while you're doing something else. But uh, Charles um, <clears throat> has some of the best real life farm to table. He will show the production of food in his own garden from garden planning to uh, plot planning to preparation of the soil to uh, each step of the way uh, in up to preparing the food and even eating it. Um, <clears throat> that takes a lot of really good organization and he does a great job with it. But here's why we're telling his story on this channel. He watched our, he was watching our channel and decided to do what we suggested. He went to get his own uh, inflammation panel. And in part one, he showed that he had some inflammation and he had evidence of past inflammation in his CIMT. In this video, we're, he's gonna talk about and we're gonna show that not only did he have um, significant in, insulin resistance, by some definitions, he had full-blown diabetes. And here was his point. He said, Doc, I've had a couple of heart attacks. I've had a couple of events. And uh, I was still progressing with this disease. I've got really good docs. I've got a good cardiologist and a good family doc. Neither one of them could tell me why this was progressing. Um, now I know. In some ways, you may have saved my life. And I, I told him I appreciated that. He made some significant changes um, in his diet. Um, <clears throat> they weren't painful. He'd had a small nacho chip habit. He got rid of those when he found out they had a carb metabolism problem. And um, despite the pixelation, you may want to check out his, uh, his uh, fairly dramatic demonstration of how much weight he's lost. He's lost 15 pounds uh, in just a few weeks dropping those chips. Um, in return for providing him that information, I asked him if he would uh, provide his story to viewers on my channel, and he was uh, eager to do so. So let's go with part two, where uh, Charles is discovering that he's got uh, ins not only insulin resistance, but uh, diabetes. That would measure the inflammation that was going on in, in my body. And so you could, you can probably name the other <laughs> other tests that, that we ran. So what we found out was that, yes, I'm experiencing uh, inflammation in my body, which we now believe was contributing to the uh, soft plaque buildup in my arteries. And that soft plaque buildup, when it ruptures, uh, contributes to the closing of the artery and if you don't do something about it pretty quick, you'll be into a full-blown heart attack. Yeah, your CIMT, do you mind if I describe what we oh. saw there? Yeah, please. Your arterial age was actually uh, pretty low, lower than uh, your chronological age. You did have a couple of plaques, and like you said, most of them were uh, calcified, which meant they were stable. If you look at your inflammatory panel, that didn't look too bad either. But here's where uh, you saw the problem. You remember that other test where you did the OGTT, the oral glucose? Oh, yeah. I for, yeah, I forgot that test. Yeah. That's the one that showed some significant uh, results. Do you remember what those were? Uh, only that it showed that I was fully into diet, being a diabetic. I don't yeah. remember the numbers. Yeah, so do you remember how they did that test where you go in uh, fasting, they take one blood sugar, and then they give you that sweet syrup, that <laughs> challenge. And then they take it again at uh, an hour and then at two hours. Right. 
And yeah, where you were saying, look, uh, it was full-blown diabetes, at two hours, your number was over 200. Yes. And one of the, there are several definitions of diabetes, uh, pre-diabetes and diabetes. One of the definitions the ABA, the American Diabetes Association uses, is uh, any time a blood sugar over 200. So, you know, if you go back to some of the statements that John relayed about some of the docs, and I've heard docs say that too, that the OGTT and the insulin survey, the Kraft insulin survey are, are uh, loaded for, uh, to, to make you fail. Um, that's 75 grams of, uh, of glucose. Yeah. You get more than that in a big gulp. And people can drink more than one big gulp a day, quite often. So, um, yes, what that is, it's a challenge test, but it's a test to see how often your blood sugar is significantly above 140. Because if it is, then you start developing inflammation and plaque, and then you start going down that process that you described, creating... Um, plaque inside your artery walls and risk for heart attack and stroke and dementia. So you were in a very, very, uh, I, I, one of the reasons I wanted to share this interview is that overall you have a very healthy diet. And in fact, I'd like to talk about that in just a minute because you are the ultimate farm to table. You know, the high, the high end restaurants these days like to say farm to table. Well, I'll tell you what, I've never seen anybody more farm to table than you are. Yeah. Um, and really good uh, diet in terms of uh, vegetables. But again, what you found out was that you were spending significant time over uh, 120, significant, probably significantly over 140. In fact, when you get a 75 gram glucose challenge, you were you were over 200. Clearly. Yeah. Nobody would argue that causes uh, artery damage. So you're at a place now where you need to reconfigure your diet some. But the point I wanted to make is that, look, <clears throat> how many people do you know um, have heard of diabetes and say, well, that's not me. Somebody else has got that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you know, let me let me interrupt you and, and make one comment, okay? Uh, I did not uh, let's say, let's say a year ago, my diet wasn't quite as good. Yes, I ate a lot of things that I grow in the garden, but occasionally, and you you occasionally uh, I would have a soda, uh, and of course mm. I know, uh, yeah, and occasionally. Uh, I would have uh, uh, maybe something sweet, you know, uh, maybe a piece of pie or uh, I wasn't into donuts and stuff like that. But uh, so that was a problem now that I look back and say that was the beginning probably of uh, my higher numbers. A quick example, if you look back about a year ago, at one of my CRP numbers, it was two. Mm -hmm. and, that's not, and that's not that's not good. No, that's the C-reactive protein. It's one of those other tests yeah. for those of us listening. One of the other tests on the inflammation panel. And that was my point. Um, if you look at how many people have a problem, the University of California, UCLA, just uh, published a study a few months ago saying, look, over half of the adults, this is people 30 and older, in the state of California have at least insulin resistance, pre-diabetes. On over the road to, on the road to diabetes. Yeah, yep. they have, they're rotting, they're burning their arteries. You know, and it doesn't matter. People say, well, my doctor told me I had a touch of sugar and I need to watch it. Well, a touch of sugar means you've got prediabetes, which means you've got, you're building up inflammation in your arteries. So that's the whole idea. Once, actually, 
uh, when you look at it and you say, what kills and disables uh, adults in this world, in America? It's not so much diabetes, it's heart attack, stroke, and dementia caused by arterial inflammation. And most of that arterial inflammation happens before you get a full-blown diagnosis of diabetes. It's when you're in that pre-diabetic state because we'll be typically in that one, two, three decades before we get full-blown diabetes. So that's the problem. That's the hidden silent killer that's getting all of us. We're thinking we're okay until we get a diagnosis of full-blown diabetes. Well, actually, we're rotting our arteries long before we get that diagnosis. I, that is something that I have learned from you, uh, you know, within the last uh, couple months. Um, and, and so you may say, well, how, if, if this began with me, and I accept that it did, 30 years ago when I was age 50, um, nobody would even have thought about testing that kind of stuff at that, at that age because I didn't have any symptoms. Right. Um, so the message to, to me and to people is change your diet. If you're, if you're having a bad diet, you got to change that diet 30 years ago. Now, a lot of people, it's already too late to change it 30 years ago, but I'm, I, and I say this quite often, and I know maybe people don't really appreciate that, but the American food today, fast food, high fructose corn syrup, having a cola in your hand all day long is killing Americans at a faster rate than ever before. So there you have it. I don't think I could have said it better. Um, the fructose in our diet, especially, and a lot of the other carbs are just wreaking havoc on us, and we don't even know it. Thank you again, Charles. And in part three, uh, uh, OAG will start talking about a little bit more depth in, in terms of his diet. Thanks for your interest.